We have our Danish Danishes in Denmark this morning. And the sun is out and we're gonna go have a fun day. Good morning, guys. It is another beautiful day here in Copenhagen. Well, the first beautiful day, actually. That's true, the very first day that we've actually seen the sunshine. Crossing the street, crossing the street. And we had our delicious Danishes this morning. They were, I think, raspberry flavored. And we just grabbed them from the grocery store downstairs. But so we finally checked that off of our Denmark checklist. I don't even know if they call them Danishes. Today we have a few things that we're gonna go do. Since it's sunny, we're actually gonna go see the Little Mermaid statue, which we've heard multiple times that it's not worth it and it's small. But we're here, we have to. Yeah, even our host on our Airbnb, he had left us a note saying, I mean, I guess you can go if you want, but I really would not recommend you go to see the Little Mermaid, but we saw the Han Kirsten Anderson statue, so why not? Yeah, we have to. And then we're gonna go see the crown jewels of the royal family of Denmark. And then we're gonna go to the meatpacking district, which is supposed to be like the cool place with all the cool restaurants tonight. Yep, so let's go see the crown jewels. So here we are at the King's Garden, which we actually were here the other day. We didn't realize where we were, and we saw the H.C. Anderson statue. And then we also came here the other night, and it was dark, so we weren't able to go into the palace to see the crown jewels. They have a weird hours from 10 to 3, so very short window to come in and see it. But that is where we are today. We're gonna go see the crown jewels, hopefully if it's open. But the grounds right now are just beautiful today. When we were here previously, like I said, it was dark and it was also pouring rain. So it wasn't very enjoyable, but today it is bright and sunshiny and there's snow that is a little bit dusting the ground and ice on the trees from yesterday where it snowed just a little bit, making it even more beautiful. So we're gonna walk up to the palace and see if we can get in and see the crown jewels now. So far, you have to look everywhere. There's tons of royal memorabilia or regalia everywhere. And it wouldn't be a proper castle without a spiral stone staircase like we're going up right now. So this palace has kind of felt like a large home, obviously extremely ornate and beautiful, until you come to this grand hall, and that is just when it hits you of the castliness or palaceness of this royal family. We just did our tour of the palace, like where the residence was in the grand hall, and now we're gonna go find the basement, and it might be right here actually. Go down into this tower.
All right, so we just emerged from the basement of the Rosenborg Palace where the crown jewels of the Danish royal family were. They were really pretty, really cool. I really expected this day to be a little bit more, or this spot to be a little bit more like just going in and seeing the crown jewels. But I ended up seeing this huge palace that mm -hmm. I had no idea anything about. Yeah, it was really interesting. I thought it, had a, it did a good job of showing you all the pictures of the royal family. I knew I know nothing about the Danish royal family, so I feel like I was at least educated on the names of some of the rulers and um, just some different things that they did. Um, so I thought this was a really cool one. I liked this, all the different things you could see in the palace. Yeah, and it was so interesting uh, inside, going through the first like three floors, it just felt very like small, elaborate, almost like a, it didn't feel like it would be like a place where they actually lived. Like a palace. Like a hunting like, lodge. Yeah, like or... a retreat kind of place yeah. for them. Until you come to the fourth floor and it's just like this huge grand hall with the thrones on the ends, which were made out of silver. And, and... Norwell tusk. Norwall. I, Norwall. I didn't know that was a real animal. I thought it was mythical, but I learned that today too. The it's real. The of the sea. <laughs> yeah. But then they have three large silver lions that were protecting the thrones that are still used today, like in coronations and stuff, I think they were saying. I think so, yeah. And there's also a big like, baptismal thing that is still used since mm -hmm. like 1617 until now. All the children of the royal family are still baptizing that as well. Yeah. That's and then cool. at the end of touring the palace, we went down to the basement, of course, and that's where you saw all of the jewels and the huge treasury vault. And the crowns and... And this was a yeah, pretty good time cool. to come too because there was like next to nobody here. I think it's just kind of like the low season. And so... Uh, it wasn't super crowded. Yeah. I could see that being not as fun if it was really crowded because it is kind of a smaller palace. So... And then once again time. too, I think to further my beliefs that the Danish family is the most approachable royal family in all of Europe, there was like next to no ropes keeping yeah. you away from the walls and stuff. Like all the other palaces like in Austria and whatnot that you go to, there's like ropes and you have to like go through like a little narrow uh, path through the rooms. This one is just explore the space. Just mm -hmm. get out and just You could probably touch walk all around. the things if you wanted to. Yeah, there's nothing we stopping didn't try, you from but doing that. Have. But yep. it So really very, cool. very beautiful, very cool. But while we still have sunlight out in this beautiful sunny day, we need to go see the Little Mermaid statue. Here we go. So Google Maps told us that the bus would turn towards the Little Mermaid statue. It did not. It took us down to these docks where there's like huge cruise ships. That sounds fun too, but <laughs> no more stuff. <laughs> so now we're gonna try to walk our way to the Little Mermaid statue, because we don't trust anything anymore. We'll trust ourselves. <laughs> I don't know how long the walk is gonna be, but I am so glad that today it is a bright and sunshiny and not a rainy day for once, because it makes it a little more enjoyable when we have to do things like this rather than having to fight the cold, wet rain. They didn't realize it was out in the water. I thought it was like a statue you could come up to. I kind of like that. You can see the water behind her and everything. That's really cool. We are walking away from the Little Mermaid statue now. Yeah, we just saw it, the Little Mermaid. And um, I really liked it. I know a lot of people were saying like, ah, oh, it's not worth it going to see it. But I thought it was cool. It's different. I didn't realize it was out on the water. So it really seemed like well, you know, a mermaid coming out of the water up onto the rock, like you see in the movie and the story and everything. And um, I think since everyone had said it was really small, it was bigger than we were expecting. Yeah, that was my so. biggest thing, that it was bigger than expected. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of like the palace that we just came from, because we're here in the off season, the crowd wasn't too, too big around. I could, I could see that getting like yeah. really crazy and big with people all around it so it wasn't too bad it was kind of easy to get down there and get a picture of it especially with this like crystal clear day you can get some pretty cool shots and views of it 
Um, so yeah, I would say it's worth it. I don't see why people <laughs> dog on it so much. It's not so bad. It's not like you have to pay to see it or anything. You just walk up and see her. Yeah. It was cool. Keep walking past the Little Mermaid statue and to the right, there's this cool park area with this cathedral. Um, and so we're gonna go check that out. From above, from the aerial view map, it looks like a star. So it looks really cool. And it looks like you can, there's a good view from up here. And there's a windmill that we can see kind of in the distance. So we're gonna see if we can get to that. So we're walking around these ramparts and it looks like it was an old battle like installation but there's cannons all over the top there's a big window that we have to see and there's people all over jogging it was a beautiful place beautiful views which is just like what we think about denmark so far actually yeah really pretty i really like that it's right by the sea so it has that kind of sailboat sea feel and all of the statues i guess were made of copper and so they're all green now weathered so that gives it a really cool look too um and it just is very clean very nice definitely a fan i like it a lot So we finished walking this star-shaped area and now we're headed to the meat packing district where they have lots of cool food and it's supposed to be a fun atmosphere. So here we go. All right, we are in the meat packing district now and we watched somebody feed Phil on Netflix and he had a restaurant that he went to here that sounded really good. It's a seafood restaurant. And then also our host recommended a restaurant down in this area. But we're gonna walk around and see what all we can find because supposedly this is one of the hip happening and best places to eat in Denmark. So we're just gonna come down here and look. I mean, already the smell in the air is like, I don't know which restaurant it is, but it may be all of them mixed together, but it smells <laughs> so good here. So, and we're starving, because we haven't eaten anything since our Danish Danishes in Denmark. <laughs> so we need to find something pretty quickly. All right, so we just popped into that restaurant and they don't open until six o'clock for dinner. They're open for just drinks right now. And that may be the case with a lot of these places. Yeah. It is only 4.30. <laughs> we did ourselves. An injustice. <laughs> yeah, by not eating until right now. So. Uh, I don't know. And the smells aren't gonna help waiting so for an hour and a half to eat. But that is the place from Somebody Feeds Phil. So that's why we went in there first. We just stumbled upon it. And it smelled good. It looked cool. I wanna go back. So we're just about done killing time until we can actually go into the restaurant and the kitchen opens. And so we've walked around the whole meat packing district and there's all kinds of history throughout the uh, little buildings. They have little windows where you can go and read about it. So this meat packing district was written in the 19, or was built in the 1930s to provide clean meat to Copenhagen and it was huge in this heyday. However, more interesting than that, outside on the walls here, just literally out in the open are these urinals up against the wall. That's a splash guard. 
There's the toilet. That's disgusting. <laughs> but on that note, we're gonna go eat now. So apparently you have to have reservations to get in. They don't have a table open until eight and we're starving. So we're gonna find something else. We needed to do a review of some Danish barbecue from some Southern American barbecue connoisseurs. <laughs> yeah, so we went ahead and we ended up eating at War Pig's barbecue restaurant over in the meatpacking district. Yeah, it was super, like, really good, and it was, um, seemed like the place to be. It was packed, crowded, but it seems like most people were going there just to get drinks and hang out with friends, not to necessarily eat. And that's so, why I didn't film anything because it was super loud and honestly, kind of a disappointment. In terms of the amount of food that you get, you see how much food we got at the barbecue place. We got, uh, we got some brisket, pork shoulder, hot links, and baked beans, and it cost us 250 krone. Mm -hmm. And so it was really expensive for how much you got. Yeah, we were hoping to share it and it wasn't quite enough for both of us. But like the actual meat, I thought was very, very good. Um, but none of the, sauces quite tasted like barbecue sauce it was really good danish barbecue not quite up to our <laughs> our southern american barbecue standards but still really good and you may also be wondering well why did you go to a barbecue restaurant whenever you're in denmark yeah. and we did see online that it was one of the highly rated places in the meatpacking district so yeah. that's why we went for it and it was crazy packs we figured it's got to be good yeah but anyways, we're back at our Airbnb now, and this is our final night in Copenhagen. And in the morning, we are gonna be taking a train to Stockholm, Sweden, mm -hmm. where we have loved our time in Copenhagen. Yeah, it's really cool. We're gonna miss it. If you like these videos, make sure that you like them and then subscribe so you can keep following our travels, and we'll keep you posted on where we're going next. <laughs> <laughs>